In 1914, the brothers H.C. and E.W. Bennett sold their Phoenix-based lumber company and set out for sunny Los Angeles to build a company that would spend the next 10 decades growing into what is known today as the world leader in strong, lightweight trailers. The utility trailer manufacturing company has a rich history, seeing two world wars, prohibition, the national highway expansion, the Great Depression, countless booms and busts, cultural shifts, space exploration, advances in technology, and the ushering in of a new millennium. And through it all, Utility has maintained its reputation for building quality, high-strength, lightweight trailers that serve their customers year after year, decade after decade. This is that story. inspired a small trailer company to innovate beyond stopping power. During the slight recession following World War I, Utility bought back 100 cable reel cars from the government, sold them for a profit, and quickly rebounded. With the glitz and glamour of the Roaring Twenties in full swing, automobiles became affordable and ownership tripled. Soon, road improvements increased the demand for trailers. Utility responded by moving to a larger facility, increasing production, and hiring the first full-fledged design and production engineer. Utility improved the trailer yet again by solving the whipping problem inherent at top speeds of 25 miles per hour. Utility's innovative roller fifth wheel allowed drivers to easily steer with the slightest pressure. In 1924, development began on six-wheel attachments, which would revolutionize heavy-duty trucking. By the end of the decade, Utility had become the trailer of choice for top corporations in the West and would soon become popular across the growing nation. In 1931, Utility expanded to Fresno and further to the Pacific Northwest, offering dealerships in Portland and Seattle. By 1933, Utility grew far beyond the watery western border of California, delivering its first shipment of trailers to the Hawaiian Islands. Of course, the 1930s weren't always sunny. The Great Depression devastated the worldwide economy, cutting international trade in half and putting 25% of Americans out of work. Despite these economic troubles, the nation's highway system continued to expand dramatically with the opening of Route 66, a 2,400-mile highway connecting Chicago to Los Angeles. During the mid-1930s, severe drought and erosion in the Great Plains caused the Dust Bowl, which put farmers and ranchers out of work. Nearly 60% of the population fled the area, many heading west along Route 66, in search of a better life in California. But Route 66 was more than just an escape path for devastated farmers. By offering a diagonal route through flatlands with temperate climates, this easily traveled road enabled truckers to rival the railroad for preeminence in the shipping industry. In 1935, Utility's continued success led to the purchase of a steel foundry in Southgate, California, enabling the company to produce its own steel castings. Throughout the 1930s, Utility created many new innovations, including the use of elliptical spring running gear, 
an axle suspension system which eliminated weight transfer during braking, the first shockless air-operated pintle hook for doubles operation, the use of aluminum for trailer bodies, and fully automatic support legs. In 1939, Utility celebrated its silver anniversary, 25 years of leadership in trailer production, solving many of the industry's challenges. But half a world away, a far greater, more menacing challenge was brewing. After the surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, America promptly declared war on Japan and by December 11th had also declared war on Germany. The military's growing need for munitions and equipment would soon require the products and expertise of a utility trailer manufacturing company. Utility provided all of the castings for the M5 tank in the West and its trailer division designed rugged M23 ammunition trailers, seen here in this top secret War Department film of utility engineering being put to the test. A test that it passed after being whipped, tugged, bounced, pulled, and practically dragged through the California desert. A heartfelt thanks goes out to the hardworking people of utility that turned out 14 per day to meet the government's order for 3,000 by the end of the war. In honor of these contributions, the War Department awarded Utility the Army-Navy E Award for Excellence. H.C. Bennett, shown here, was proud to attend the award ceremony and represent every utility employee that proudly stood on their assembly line in order to bring about victory for all our young men fighting on the front line. The employees of Utility expressed their pride in a caption they wrote for the award ceremony program. Most of us have relatives or very close friends in the service. All of us miss our fellow employees who are in uniform. It is for them that we have placed our shoulders to the wheel and is to these in the service of our country to whom we pledge our unceasing effort to continue so that they may soon return home. While U.S. troops bravely fought overseas, civilians at home banded together to support the war effort. All across America, young and old alike, did their patriotic duty, from purchasing war bonds, to growing produce at home in victory gardens, to simply collecting scrap metal. As the war drew to a close, Utility continued to focus on product innovation, introducing improvements such as integral frame bodies, new six-wheel attachments, and the power automatic semi-trailer. As demand for trailers increased, Utility rapidly expanded its chassis department, developed additional body facilities, and opened new sales and service locations. By the end of the decade, Utility was the first manufacturer to establish sales and service centers in every state west of the Continental Divide. By better serving its customers and its country in the 40s, Utility will always be able to look back and be proud of its heritage during this turbulent and world-changing decade. During the 1950s era of booming prosperity, Utility bought 40 acres in City of Industry, California, and relocated the company to its present headquarters. Staying true to its tradition of providing unparalleled service, Utility began offering nationally known brand parts as optional extras. In the post-World War II years, unemployment remained low, advances in technology increased productivity, and industries across the United States thrived. Thanks to the introduction of credit cards and increased consumer lending, Americans quickly adopted the buy now, pay later approach to everything from automobiles and appliances to houses and swimming pools. Flashy hot rods and affordable family cars abounded as automobile ownership doubled, and President Eisenhower's Interstate Highway Act of 1956 allocated funds for a network of four, six, and eight-lane highways. 
During this time, trailer financing greatly boosted sales for utility and paved the way for future growth. The company's then 2,000 employees worked diligently to accommodate increased demand. And in their spare time, many co-workers enjoyed playing in highly competitive bowling leagues. As the Interstate Highway Act revolutionized transportation in the United States, utility responded with a number of significant advancements. Utility engineers continually tested new materials, new designs, and new production methods to deliver trailers with increased payload space and reduced tear weight. Utilities' 1950s innovations included pioneering the use of polyurethane insulation in refrigerated van design, introducing monocoque aluminum van design, and enhancing sliding side doors with tighter seals and better tracking. The 1950s were a decade of stability and growth for utility, and although the next decade would bring many cultural changes and political unrest, utilities' commitment to innovation would remain steadfast. In the 1960s, construction of the federal highway system accelerated and the trucking industry really began to take off. Soon there were more utility trailers on the road than ever before. Utility opened its second and third regional manufacturing plants near Salt Lake City, Utah and in El Paso, Texas to keep up with demand and expand capacity to serve markets in the eastern United States and Mexico. As baby boomers became teenagers, the 60s youth-oriented culture dreamed of a brighter future in the space age and marveled to see Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. Idealists began to take action, embarking on freedom rides for voting equality and marching on Washington for civil rights. Students organized sit-ins protesting the Vietnam War, and a new generation of women rejected the role of traditional housewife fighting for equal job opportunities. At a time when space-age design was every company's focus, utility engineers also concentrated on providing solutions for the immediate future. A new assembly line method was pioneered using more sophisticated tooling, jigs, and fixtures to produce trailers that would consistently meet utilities' rigorous standards. Utilities' innovations continued in the 60s with the converter dolly, which pulled trailers in tandem using a revolutionary trans-spring counterbalance design that rendered the previous systems obsolete. Plus, utilities' proprietary foam-in-place process became a benchmark of the lightest weight refrigerated trailer in the industry. The success of this trailer was so legendary that in 1967, serial entrepreneur Jerry Malone chose a custom built reefer from utility when he landed on a unique opportunity, a traveling frozen whale exhibit. After Malone's death in 1997, the frozen whale named Little Irvy left the cool comfort of his utility reefer and was laid to rest on a dairy farm in California. Someday, future archeologists will make a very puzzling discovery. In the 1970s, the second generation of Bennetts, John C. and Walter, stepped up to steer their family's company into the future. Under their leadership, the utility dealer distribution system expanded again, providing sales and service to the East Coast. By the end of the decade, utility offered a nationwide full-service dealer network and ranked in the top seven producers. The 1970s will be remembered as one of the most turbulent periods in America's history, beginning with the Kent State Massacre and ending with the Iran hostage crisis. Across the country, activists called for political leaders to end the Vietnam War, pass the Equal Rights Amendment, and protect the environment. After OPEC's oil embargo against the United States in 1973, another economic recession gripped the world. Tempers flared as gas station lines snaked around the block and prices quadrupled. In an attempt to conserve oil during this crisis, President Nixon signed into law the 55 mile per hour speed limit. Less than a year later, following the Watergate scandal, he would become the first president to resign from office. Despite the nation's growing energy problems, the trucking industry flourished. Having earned a reputation for delivering top 
quality trailers, utilities market share increased substantially. Amidst the social and political upheaval, utility engineers kept their noses to the grindstone and delivered a number of game-changing innovations. In 1972, Utility introduced the lightweight Superstar line of reefers and dry freight vans, which revolutionized the industry. In 1978, Utility invented and introduced the patented barrier door and was the first in the industry to completely eliminate foam-piercing hardware in reefers. Just a year later, Utility pioneered the revolutionary waterproof electrical wiring harness system. Warranted for a full 10 years, it remains the most dependable electrical system in the industry to date. Utility's Golden Superstar Reefer sparkled on the 1974 album Truckin' Through the Years by Vance Edwards and the Country Superstars. This timely record's tune celebrated the many facets and moods of a trucker's life in the 1970s. During the prosperous 1980s, Utility invested in plant expansions and state-of-the-art manufacturing equipment. To streamline operations, the company dedicated each plant to producing a specific line of products. Utility expanded into the eastern region with a new flatbed manufacturing plant in Enterprise, Alabama, and a refrigerated van plant in Marion, Virginia, to support the expanded dealer distribution network. The 1980s and the election of President Ronald Reagan ushered in an era of renewed hope, from the long-awaited return of the Iran hostages to the unprecedented miracle on ice at the Winter Olympics in Lake Placid, New York. Early in the decade, the United States hosted two World's Fair exhibitions welcoming visitors from around the globe, and the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles attracted a record participation of 140 nations. A booming stock market offered spectacular returns, creating more wealth for more American families than ever before. Reduced inflation and lowered taxes contributed to our nation's economic growth, marking one of the longest periods of prosperity in U.S. history. Throughout the 1980s, consumers welcomed a variety of technological advances, from VCRs and cable TV to home computers and gaming consoles. In 1981, Utility introduced the Tautliner, the world's foremost patented curtain-sided convertible van-to-flatbed system. Its unique dual-function design combined the strength and weather protection of a van with the quick and easy loading advantages of a flatbed. A year later, Utility added the Tautliner truck body. Utility introduced the 2000R in 1986, utilizing the company's now legendary foam-in-place insulation. The 2000R quickly became America's top-selling reefer and made Utility North America's number one manufacturer of refrigerated trailers. But this wouldn't be the end of Utility's number ones. In the 1990s, Utility continued to expand as a full-line manufacturer, building a regional manufacturing plant in Paragould, Arkansas, dedicated to producing dry freight vans. Apart from Operation Desert Storm and a brief recession in the early 1990s, many Americans enjoyed peace and prosperity during the last decade of the 20th century. Inflation and unemployment remained low, the stock market continued to soar, and a rapidly expanding economy delivered the longest boom in U.S. history. The Internet ushered in the information age, changing the way the world communicated and setting the stage for a truly global economy. With the establishment of the North American Free Trade Agreement and the World Trade Organization, there would be an opening up of more North American trade apportioning. Technological advancements reached new heights, 
From a telescope's images of a universe we had never seen, to a Pathfinder landing on Mars, to a cloned sheep named Dolly. Consumers embrace new technology, trading VHS tapes for DVDs, cassettes for CDs, landlines for cell phones, and film for digital photos. Utility kept pace with a rapidly changing marketplace. Introducing the 2000D dry freight van and center seal, a new line of multi-temp refrigerated trailers. By the end of the decade, Utility would once again set a new industry standard with the revolutionary 3000R refrigerated trailer. In 1998, Utility's five factories produced 26,862 trailers, placing the company in the top three producers of truck trailers for the first time. In order to accommodate what was to come in the new millennium, Utility expanded both its Utah and Marion plants, doubling their capacity. In June of 2000, Utility redefined industry standards again by introducing the 3000R, which boasted a weight savings of 800 pounds while still maintaining its strength. To this day, it remains the best-selling reefer in the industry. With fears of the Y2K bug put to rest, the new millennium began with a sigh of relief. But by the end of the year 2000, internet startups suffered a blow when the dot-com bubble burst. On September 11, 2001, the nation watched in horror as terrorists attacked the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Rescue and support volunteers from across the country rushed to offer assistance at Ground Zero, and President George W. Bush declared a war on terror. Natural disasters struck across the U.S., from wildfires scorching the West Coast to tornadoes ripping through the Southeast, Hurricane Katrina cut a path of destruction across the Gulf Coast, and Hurricane Sandy battered the entire eastern seaboard. Amidst the doom and gloom, bright spots emerged. Technology advances aided conservation efforts as consumers embraced a virtual marketplace, replacing CDs with digital music, DVDs with streaming videos, and traditional books with e-readers. After kicking off the new century by debuting the revolutionary 3000R, Utility remained dedicated to innovation. In 2006, cost-efficient LED lights were offered as options. A year later, Utility delivered better durability and fuel efficiency with the totally redesigned 4000A lightweight flatbed. Despite the financial crisis that began in 2008, Utility gained market share and became the number one manufacturer of trailers in North America in 2009. That year, Utility's new 4000DX dry freight van was the first in the industry to be EPA certified SmartWay. With the addition of a composite wall, the 4000DX became the fastest growing product introduction in Utility's history. With the third and fourth generation of family management in place, Utility is well positioned for future growth. We look forward to the next 100 years.